Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Wednesday. It's Wednesday, right? Yes. Wednesday, and all of our guests today are brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. We're joined now by J.P. Berry, NHL agent to the stars. His <laughs> clients include Elias Pettersson and Tyler Myers. Yes. And Aiden Celebrini, recently drafted yeah. by the, uh, or drafted last week by the Vancouver Canucks. J.P., thanks so much for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, I mean, I'm stuck in my office in the middle of summer but hopefully that'll let up pretty soon we know how you feel we're off uh, we're off on, <laughs> on friday for a couple of weeks i think hey uh jp everybody in vancouver knows this everybody in canuck uh, nation elias Pettersson, one year left on his uh contract his current contract before he becomes an rfa what can you tell us about the state of negotiations at this point yeah i mean i think there was some you know we had some initial talks with the team just about timing only and i you know it's our view and you know leas is home in the summer and we need to get we, we had a really rough uh free agent market the last little while draft so i mean i think it's something that'll get started up again uh, later this summer but i think uh right now we just got to get through this this period JP, uh, everybody in Canada who's a hockey fan knows the situation uh, that uh, unfolded with Matthew Kachuk, with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, uh, Alex Dabrinkit, uh, all RFAs who got got their way and they got out of their uh, uh, current situation. They, they moved on. Um, okay, uh, okay, uh, but yeah, but I, but I represent David Pasternak and uh, Philip Forsberg and they, you know, yeah, but they JP, got, can they, got I, can, the deals done. they they <laughs> did. Uh, uh, yeah. Has the landscape changed though in in Canada at the very least, JP, because of those moves? Uh, no, I think. It, well, I think um, again. I think every case is is different, so the, the people have to look at it and get a feel for it. I mean, almost all those probably negotiations started the you know the summer before, and then they they got into difficult water, and I think a lot of it isn't only the team it's the cap so you know you have to look at every situation some of them were the cap some of them were the the style but some of them were yes players that have just simply decided to go elsewhere so i think it's important to look at every situation differently and but at the same time yes i mean teams you know asset management is a huge thing and they they need time and and they need time to know if they're not going to be signing a player so um i don't i think in the past maybe you could adjust in the final couple of weeks, but I think that's really difficult in this environment to, to make a big trade uh, with, with, without having time. JP, what's Elias's mindset right now? Is he frustrated with the losing that's happened with this franchise? No, no, I wouldn't say that's his perspective. I think he just, you know, he wants to see progress and just like all the players do, he's not alone. He, he wants to, he wants to win and he, he wants a group, but I mean, he likes the, you know, the group that he, that he's with and hopefully they can improve upon it and, there's, you know, there's, there's pieces there, and he's happy. He likes the city. So, no, I mean, I, I think there's going to be a lot of things we'll have to discuss. I mean, free agency is a, is a big thing for a player. It's, you know, it's probably his, for all of these guys at their age, it's their largest contract, so it's their most important contract. So there's a lot of things that, that have to be discussed when we, when we get into um, talking about an extension. Hey, JP, um, <clears throat> would it not be in the best interest of the Canucks to get uh, Patterson done quickly? Uh, if he outpoints Austin Matthews again, uh, the number is going to be pretty high, is it not, JP? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if a player goes into his final year, like, I mean, obviously we saw with Pasternak, and he scored sixty plus goals, then his his leverage is going to go up. I think, uh, you know, I think Boston, you know, would have preferred to have done that deal last summer, but. Uh, you know, the, 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 it took longer, and obviously the, the player was playing really well. And so, I mean, timing timing is important, but a player can also have, you know, that it, it flips the other way. I've had a lot of players that didn't like going into their final year, and sometimes they they don't have the best year. So that, you know, that thing can go can go both ways. JP, any, uh, any chance you meet with the Canucks face-to-face uh, this summer about Elias? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we're all going to take a little bit of a break here when we get through July. It's been a long, long year, but I mean, if we do it, it'll be yeah, probably later in the summer. And you know, um, I'm going to LA, and Pat and I are going to sit down and talk about this and a few other things here next week. But 
um, you know, um, anything's possible. But yeah, we've done that several times before. Is you know, gone through the summer and then had meetings in you know early September as you know before camps start up. Uh, JP, you got another client here, uh, Tyler Myers. The rumors never end, and you know this, JP. You and I talk about this all the time. But now the latest one is San Jose. What do you know? Is there anything to this uh, Myers to San Jose? Well, it's hard for me when some of these rumors come up because everyone thinks that we're sort of somehow aware of them. Like they, a lot of these ones, especially when you know, especially when they don't have any substance, you get blindsided with them and ask questions. And you know, I mean, I would have, I would have to guess call up both teams and say is this you know is this true and there's been so many so i think uh i'm not aware of anything going on with san jose so i you know i have to i I can't react every time because i think that's the 13th team in (laughs) two years that's been that's been connected to them do you get tired of it though the myers stuff like where do you see the future for myers in vancouver uh, jp well, he, I mean, he, he loves it there, but he, you know, he's, he knows it's his final year. He has to, I mean, he has to have a really strong year for his own future too. So, I mean, he, he likes playing for this team. He, he liked the changes last year. He liked dealing with the coaches. Um, I think he can have a really good year. He thinks he can. And then, you know, he immediately becomes a, a really good trade asset next, you know, no matter what happens, if he's not going to be resigned or depending on how the team's doing, like his contract is going to be, mostly paid out through signing bonus later this summer. And then he's playing on, I think a million dollars. So he's going to be an interesting, you know, asset at the trade deadline next year, no matter what, if he's not re-signed in Vancouver or, you know, depending on how the team's doing. Talking with JP Barry, uh, JP, are, are the Canucks in your opinion headed in the right direction under Patrick Elvin and Jim Rutherford? Yeah, I think they're doing. I think they're doing their best to bring to bring pieces. I think this was just a you know I can you can look around the league. This was a really tough market, um, you know, to to do things cap wise, and mm-hmm. I think it spilled over to everybody. I think there's a lot of teams that would have liked to have added more. Um, I think it wasn't going to be by free agency because of the the cap and how tight the cap was. So I think there's going to be tinkering with rosters like. I think there will be more little moves sideways to help depth around the league and help teams add pieces, but it's going to have to be by trade, I think, in the next while, over the next several months. How much do you expect uh, the salary cap to rise next off season? Well, we sure hope the economy keeps you know, keeps keeps going. We've had a lot of a lot of hiccups the last several years, and then the, the repayment, which was part of our our cap deal, so. I mean, all of us hope it goes up at least 5% or more. Like, you know, we've seen, you know, we've seen a prognosis where it can go up at least 5, 6 million. So we're hoping it's into the high 80s, uh, you know, next year. And then we can get some momentum on the cap here the next couple of years. Hey, JP, I'm going to go back to uh, our our earlier conversation here. Uh, But, you know, Dubois, Kachuk, uh, Debrinkit, we hear about, you know, the possible mass exodus out of Winnipeg and and, and maybe Calgary, you know, playing in a Canadian market much different than an American market because of taxes, the the, the border, all the attention from media and and fans. Should, Should Canadian fans be worried about the state of their teams? I think they have to, you know, I think step one is making sure you have a really great environment and you have to have, um, you know, a, a winning sort of, you have to have a winning culture that, that, that people want. I mean, I think, you know, look, and I think lately in Toronto, they've been able to get players that haven't had the success they want, but they're they're getting players to come. And I think Montreal will get there. I think Vancouver will get there. I don't, I think the tax thing gets overstated. I mean, there there are tax mechanisms out there where playing in Canada can be less than playing in Florida. So, you know, there are things that can be done with a contract and bringing in free agents tax wise. And so I, I think it's more about just building your organization. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a tax thing or, or a Canadian thing. There are certain players that just do want to go to certain locations and there's nothing you can do about that if they want to live in florida or they want to live in nashville that that does happen hey jp before rick asks you another question um uh, after we finish this conversation can i give you a call can you tell me about those tax mechanisms that will decrease my taxes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a long it's a long discussion but we could talk about it. it's been around for years but yeah. we'll, we'll have to have a financial advisor on with me just in case <laughs> okay. i uh, mis- misstate something <laughs> awesome 
Uh, JP, another uh, Canuck client for you at the draft, uh, Aiden Celebrini. Canucks drafted him, defenseman out of the Alberta Junior Hockey League. What can you tell us about him? Great family. His brother Macklin's going to go first overall next year. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Aiden Celebrini. Yeah, I mean, our, our, our group's really excited. I mean, I'm going to be in L.A. next week with all, all our young players again, too, to, to see uh, – um, you know, see our young young players come out, but I, you know, he, I think it was a good pick. I know the Canucks were looking at him closely, and uh, I hope he just keeps progressing. And I think they're both going to be really, really good players, so it's exciting. Get yourself some time off, JP. We thank you so much for joining us today on short notice. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We'll talk soon.